Hi, thank you very much for the introduction and thank you for um, the opportunity to present at this uh, wonderful event. I've been, uh, I've joined in a couple of hours ago and I've really enjoyed a lot of uh, the discussions and scientific presentation. And I also appreciate the Native Plant Society in Utah for the generous donation to support my research. I'm very grateful for this. And I also want to acknowledge my co-authors um, across different parts of um, the country who contributed uh, one way or the other to this research, including Dr. Sean Broderick, who was, uh, who was is a graduate of uh, one of the universities in Utah who supported this work as well. So today I'll be talking about genome size diversity in North American deserts endemic genus uh, Ibisia. So genome size is the total amount of, um, of DNA in an unreplicated nucle uh, haploid nucleus. And several studies have shown that um, as new species evolve, genome, uh, the genome also evolves. So as a result of that, many uh, experts have recommended uh, genome size or genome as a reliable taxonomic marker that could be used for uh, phylogenetic studies for taxonomic um, delineations of taxa. And there are different explanations that have been offered by several experts as to the reasons why there is evolution or differences in genome size across several taxa. There, there's over 2,400 um, variations, size variations among several plant taxa in terms of genome size. And one of uh, and these bodies of explanation, they they are they could be categorized into three different um, uh, explanations, which could be neutral, especially for example the uh, mutational equilibrium hypothesis, which explains that um, genome size evolution is as a result of increases or deletions in the genome in, along uh, the genome. Whereas uh, several other people uh, believe that uh, there is uh, a maladaptive significance that is increases in genome size as a, an, an, a maladaptive uh, 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 consequences. As a result, they believe that um, when there's a, an increase in genome size, there is uh, an evolutionary mechanism that helps to purge out the SS uh, uh, mutational uh, load on the genome. And then there are some other bodies of research and experts who believe that uh, genome size evolution is as a response to evolutionary or environmental changes in the envir environmental changes such that genome size has an adaptive uh, significance for plant species and, and also animal species. And of all these three different bodies of explanation on how genome evolved, there have been several studies and empirical data that support them, that supports each of them uh, in different species. So which means that there's no overall or universal explanation as to how genome uh, evolves, but it, it could vary from taxa to taxa. However, understanding the genome size evolution can help us to infer ploidy level and also to understand evolutionary events in a particular genus. In this study, I use IVCA to understand, uh, I use genome size, uh, I estimated genome size in several taxa of IVCA across uh, the Great Basin Desert and the Mojave Desert and other parts of the Western United States. IVCA contains a, a, uh, it's, it's a group of about 38 tags, uh, which are generally perennial forbs, and they are called mouse tails. And they spread across the entire United, uh, Western United States. Most of them are found in disjunct po uh, populations and more or less relics of uh, a previously wi uh, widely distributed uh, ancestral species. Ivisa is found in Rosese and is placed within the tribe Potentilae, which in the case is strong relation, a taxonomic relationship with Potentilla, Ocellia, and Ocelliella. And several studies show that this genus 
is derived from potentilla. And in fact, there are some studies recently that argue that Ibiza should be clustered with uh, potentilla and considered a much larger uh, genus. Ibiza, uh, in according to the flora of North America, studies shows that uh, it is hypothesized that Ibiza evolved or the ancestral species of Ibiza evolved in the western slopes of the Rocky Mountains and spread across the entire basic and range, uh, basic basin and range into the Sierra Nevada, where a major evolutionary um, events occurred and resulting in the speciation of many species. Um, where now Sierra Nevada is the center of diversity for Ibiza. And this uh, animation more or less explains some of the events that took place in, uh, in geological transformation that took place in the Great Basin Desert, which, result, which brought about the aridity that we now experience in the Western United States um, currently, which explains that, uh, as you can see, as this movement is taking place where the cursor is, it shows a lot of um, tectonic uh, reconstruction, which started in the Pacific, in the Farallon uh, plates in the Pacific Ocean, bringing a lot of magma and many, many millions of years ago, about 17 million years ago, and which resulted in the collapse of what is considered the Nevada Plano. And so, uh, the, and, and when those valleys crash in, re in relation to the mountains, it created the rain shadow effect, which resulted in the aridity that we have in the Great Basin Desert today. And so as a result of the fall of the Nevada Plano, which created this aridity, it caused it, there are studies or there are hypotheses which explains that it is very likely that some of the ancestral taxa in Ibiza may have gone into extinction. And then the remaining taxa or, or the surviving taxa, they were retreated, they retreated to Sky Highlands. And that is why a large number of Ibiza species across the Western United States are found in Sky Highlands. So for example, the Ibiza utahensis and Ibiza gordonia variety wasachensis, which are found in Utah, you only find them in way, way, way high up in the Wasatch range. And of course, uh, it's also explained that uh, this aridity resulted in the evolution of the mouse tail compound leaflets as, as a result. And also new taxa also likely may have uh, evolved as a result of adapt, uh, adaptive radiation. So it is believed that Ibiza as a genus is made up of some uh, paleoendemic taxa, which are relics of ancient taxa and Neo endemic taxa, which are recent or uh, phylogenetically young taxa that uh, recently evolved. And, and about 70% of taxa, of, about, of, of the Tatia taxa in the genus, are considered endemic. For example, the Ibiza King Gia variety, Eremica, I only find it in Harsh Meadows in, in, in southern Nevada. Uh, Ibiza Ripara variety, Shelly, I only find it in just one canyon in Oregon. And Ibiza Calida and several other Ibiza species that you find in the Sierra Nevada, where you only find them in just one or two locations. And, and apart from the fact that uh, of the geological transformation and historical climate climatic changes that resulted in this endemism, there are several other explanations that have been offered as to why some species are considered endemic. For example, uh, uh, some of these species are considered new endemic because they recently evolved uh, and they have not had enough time to disperse and be in equilibrium with their climatic environment. And some of these species, particularly in Ibiza, most of the species in Ibiza, they produce an akin fruit type, which is poorly, which is which has a very poor uh, dispersal capacity compared to some other plants that produce uh, very light seeds that can be easily dispersed by wind. And so they've not, they have a very limited dispersal capacity and poor colonization. And also some of these species are found in specific uh, substrate uh, uh, or soil where they grow and some that are considered edaphic endemics that they have specific, uh, they have specializations. 
and also as a result of, of what I mentioned earlier, the paleo endemics. And because of this rarity and endemism, which is very rampant in Ibiza and perhaps several other um, endemic genera in this part of the US, uh, many of them are listed as threatened or endangered at both federal and state levels. So what is the or purpose of our, of our study was to investigate ploidy level and chromosome number in Ibiza and to investigate the ploidy level and chromosome number among other Ibiza taxa and particularly Ibiza webera. And a little bit of a story about what led to this study was that my focal study for my dissertation was Ibiza webera, which is a federally uh, threatened, federally listed threatened species in the United States. And we were about to do some uh, population genetic studies and to use microsatellite markers to study these species. But we did not even know anything about the ploidy level, whether it is diploid or polyploid. We didn't know the number of chromosomes, even though the flora of North, North America talks about other a few of other species within the genus having 28 chromosomes uh, being deployed. We didn't know about that for Ibiza webera. And so it, if we don't have that information, it limits our application of microsatellite markers to study this species. And that was why we had to first focus and get that information and make proper reliable inference on the ploidy level of this species before we can move forward. And then by chance, we also extended that study to other species and taxa within the genus for which there's limited knowledge of their ploidy level. And the research questions, the question we asked was that, is there any significant difference in the genome size among Ibiza taxa to support the hypothesis that the nuclear DNA content or genome size should be equal or similar among individuals of a species, regardless of which population you get them? And is there any significant difference in genome size within Ibiza webera? And also to ask the question, whether there's any relationship between genome size variation within Ibiza and environmental factors and functional traits. If, if it is true, then it supports the nucleotide theory that genome size have adaptive significance. And if not, then we could say that it is either maladaptive or, or, or neutral, um, evolution that results in genome size variation in IVC. So we did sampling across 31 out of 38 taxa in IVC, including two in Utah, which is IVC Gordonia variety wasachensis and IVC utahensis, both of which are endemic to that region. And we, and also we collected samples from 11 of the 16 known Ibiza webera um, within Nevada and California, all which is used to estimate the genome size using the method called the flow cytometry. And flow cytometry basically is just to count the number of the DNA in about 10,000 cells, which were, which were collected or extracted from the leaf samples that we collected. And this is where I want to just thank uh, several members of the uh, Utah Native Plant Society who were incredibly helpful, particularly Tony Freyth, who connected me with uh, Mara Olivos, who helped and with, through which I was able to collect uh, the samples, especially in areas where I've never been to before. And this field support was incredibly helpful. Thank you so much. And, and then we did karyotyping also to complement the genome size. We did karyotyping uh, using the traditional method of fixing the leaves uh, at metaphase uh, to count the, the number of chromosomes. And then we also try to see whether we can use the genome size data, with, whether we can apply it and match it with the phylogenetic analysis to see whether there's any strong correlation between genome size variation or evolution and evolutionary events and, and uh, speciation within the genus. And if so, then we'll be able to say that uh, genome size is a very strong and reliable taxonomic marker for that particular genus. 
and because of time, I'm just going to be moving a little faster here. And so once we got the data from the genome science liberation across all the taxa, then we did some data analysis to find out whether there's any significant difference in genome size among Ibisia taxa and within Ibisia Weberia populations. And also we got data, um, GIS layers of elevation, um, of substrate geology of different types of substrates where you find the plants, some grow on the soil, some grow on the rocks, uh, like uh, chasmophytes. And we have data for, uh, for act accumulative actual ev evapotranspiration and potential evapotranspiration and several other data, and including seed size to find out whether there's any strong correlation or relationship between genome size variation and uh, these variables. And to the results, we found um, about 8.14-fold variation in the nuclear DNA content uh, across or well, within IVCA, ranging from 0 0.78 picograms per 2C to uh, 5.91, uh, this, these values are mean values, uh, to 5.82 or 5.91 in IVCA lycopodioides uh, subspecies megalopetala which is uh, endemic to Sierra Nevada. And particularly for Ibiza utaensis was 1.03, and Ibiza Gordonia variety was a chances was 1.0. Uh, both of them, it has been established that they were, uh, uh, they were diploid species, which have been recorded in the flora of North America. And this is just a graphical spread of the genome size that uh, for all the 31 samples. And you can see that most of them, they have genome size that were less than 2.0, and only very few have genome size that were above 2.0, which, uh, and particularly that outlier, which is the Ibisia lycopodioides. And the results shows that most of the species or the taxa that were below 2.0 or 1.5 picograms, they were not significantly different from each other. But those that have genome size that was higher than 1.5 picograms had, were significantly different from the rest, which are the six taxa that were listed uh, on the slide. And we found no special correlation or geographic uh, gradient in the genome size variation among the taxa. Uh, and one of the questions we also ask is to test the hypothesis that uh, genome that uh, ancestral taxa came from Rocky Mountains and spread into the Sierra Nevada. And studies have shown that within a particular genus or taxonomic group, species that have low genome size, relatively low genome size, are considered ancestral taxa, and those that have a larger genome size are considered to be younger taxa within that genus. And so we use that information to find out whether there is whether um, there is any relationship between longitude uh, as a proxy for um, uh, evolution or, or, or origin and genome size. And we found uh, indeed there was an inverse relationship, even though the results was not significantly different. Within Ibiza Weberia, we found that um, Avis, that uh, the populations that were close to the range of the species, uh, which is uh, unit six, seven, and eight, as found on this map, have higher genome sizes. And the population that is farthest, southernmost, uh, which is unit 16, in the inset map, at the lowest genome size. And it shows that distance from the species range center significantly correlated with a uh, genome size variation. And from the karyotypic analysis for Ibiza Weberia, we found that indeed that this species is deployed with 28 chromosomes. We tried doing the same for other species within the genus for which we have seeds collected, but unfortunately we could not even get the seeds to germinate in the first place, let alone to start the, uh, the root squash. And then COVID-19 struck and everything was closed down in March of 2020. And, and that was how that exper uh, experiment uh, had to be suspended. For the genome size variation and environment relationship, we found out a different patterns of result, but particularly we found out that genome size is linearly correlated with elevation and inversely correlated with 
actual evapotranspiration. And those were the only two that were significantly different among the rest. And of course, we also found a linear relationship between genome size and seed size, which has been well established in several uh, previous studies. The same trend was found in Ivisa Webera when we did the same thing. And, but interestingly, for the phylogenetic analysis, uh, it, we, we didn't have enough information, uh, enough uh, nucleotide sequences that were extracted from gem bank. And so most of them were not parsimony informative and we could, and there was a lot of polytomies. And so we could not use this phylogenetic tree for preview, uh, for further studies. And we just had to leave it at that. But what we could find out from this uh, study was that all of the species within this genus, all of the taxa, all of them were diploid and they have 28 chromosomes because the studies have shown for several others that some of them have, uh, were diploid. And so the results we found was not different from what has been previously reported for some of the species in the flora of North America, including the species that were endemic to Utah. We also found a strong inverse relationship between genome size and actual evapotranspiration and also with elevation, which may support the idea that uh, genome size variation or, or evolution in Ivesia may have adaptive significance, supporting the nucleotide theory. And then we also found uh, a very strong positive relationship between genome size and seed size, which is one of the most important functional traits in all plant taxa, uh, uh, the seed size. And this has been shown that a lot of um, evolution in plant uh, uh, groups is usually correlated with seed size. And we found genome size to be correlated with this seed size as well. And just switching a little bit, we found out that um, uh, Ivesia with the larger genomes were restricted within or near the Sierra Nevada range, which supports the idea that uh, tags that have uh, relatively large, uh, large genomes are young tags. And also we found uh, there have been some uh, suspicions and hypotheses that were explained in the flora of North America that there are certain species or taxa within the genus that share a lot of morphological traits and they are likely may have been very closely related. And we found genome size to support this for these three taxa list uh, um, illustrated here and also for these three taxa as well. In fact, for Ibiza uh, uh, ripara, variety ripara, and paniculata is just one block of mountain that separates the two of them, but you can see a striking morphological uh, 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 similarity between the two taxa. And also for Ibiza webera, we found out that uh, uh, populations that are isolated and uh, with isolated from the remaining populations which likely means that there is not a lot of gene flow between that population and the remaining populations. They also, that population has the lowest genome size. And studies also have also shown that the same evolutionary processes that drive molecular genetic variation also drives intraspecific genome size variation, which means these studies can complement each other. And with that, I will just wrap up here and want to appreciate all of the different people who have contributed to this study, particularly for field work, field support, uh, giving me explanations uh, or road conditions on how to get to some of these remote locations to collect these plant species. Thank you very much. And uh, I really appreciate uh, your time.